Okay, hi. You all know that um, I'm kind of frugal and I tend to build things I need instead of buying them when I can. Uh, putting together parts that I can get on the internet or locally. And one of the things I've been looking for is a better way to filter than my um, su Superjet Vino, but it's limited capacity and a very slow pump. So I found out that I'm not the only person who uses whole house filter cartridges and well, canisters with unique cartridges inside of them. The canister alone for filtering wine or cider can be really kind of expensive and it's nothing more than a tank with triclover fittings on the end and a pressure gauge. So I've put together my own and I'm showing you how I did it and then I will do some more videos later on to let you know how well it works. However, I have it on good authority, it works. So the, some things to remember, you're going to be a system integrator. You're buying parts from other places and putting them together. And everything in here is national pipe thread. It is not SAE, uh, Society of Automotive Engineers thread. So a quarter inch pipe thread is much larger than a quarter inch SAE thread. So when you use a tap or something like that, you have to make sure you're using a pipe thread tap. That's the easy part. The other part that's a little awkward is that I buy my tri-clamp fittings off of Amazon and they're not tapered. And pipe thread normally have a bit of a taper so that when they go into the next coupling, they jam, they, they seal up better. But the pipe, the threads that come on the tri-clamp fittings that I receive are not tapered. So they have to be well taped or Teflon paste and let it set up Otherwise, they leak, especially going into plastic or something like that that's not as tight. So um, I'm just kind of giving you a heads up. Make sure you buy good, thick, heavy-duty Teflon tape. Uh, don't buy the thin, cheap stuff. It's just not going to do the job very well for you. So that said. So the first thing you're going to see is a picture of an assembled canister. And what you have are triclovers on the ends and a pressure gauge on the top. And the pressure gauge is on the inlet side before your product goes into the filter. As the filter clogs, you're going to see an increase of back pressure. Now, there's a native amount of back pressure anyway based just on the flow. So you're going to want to adjust your pump accordingly so you'll see that pressure go up. Uh, I have a bypass on my pump. I leave it fully bypassed. So it doesn't put too much pressure and then I'll, I'll have a chance to see my flow rate diminish, but the pressure will go up. So that's what we're shooting for here. Now I use Pentec canisters. I'll put a link below um, from Amazon and these are large clear canisters. So you can actually see what's going on inside with the product. And they have a pressure release button on the top, a little red button on the top. And all that is, is a screw with an O-ring on it and a spring. And you press the button and that releases the pressure inside on the, up, on the, on the in, input to the canister. We want to take that part out. So if you look, you'll see a little Allen head cross point up in there. Take your screwdriver, just with your fingers, you can hold the red button, unscrew it, and voila, those parts come out. And here's a picture of those parts. And you, they're gone. You don't need them anymore. The next thing you want to do is enlarge that hole. So here's a picture of the top, and then here's a picture from inside. And you're going to want to drill it from inside because that little detent where the spring and the O-ring and such went is going to give you a nice guide for your drill bit and what will eventually be where you're going to thread in your pressure gauge. So you need a 17 64ths drill bit to go with a quarter inch tap. Hey, look at here. Here's a chart that shows you that a quarter inch pipe thread tap goes with a 17 64th drill bit. And normal, I have a large drill index. I had the right drill bit, okay? It might be worth it for you to just buy the right drill bit. The same thing goes with the taps. I, you don't need a big tap set. I bought a six-piece set from Harbor Freight. 
pipe thread taps. And it comes with its three taps, three dies. It does not come with a die handle, does not come with a tap handle. But you don't need either today because when you start this, you'll see. I'm getting ahead of myself. Well, anyway, take your drill, be, make sure you're square, and drill from the inside out. Take that hole out, okay? And clean out all the loose threads and stuff. You'll see it's soft material. You don't have to go fast. If you have a slow speed drill, just, you're good to go. Clean it out. Now turn it over and you're going to tap it from the outside in. Now the beautiful thing is, this is a very soft material. You'll be able to start that tap with just your fingers. Just start turning it with your fingers and get it until you just can't turn it anymore. And then I used an adjustable wrench, a crescent wrench, and I used it, but you need to stop at a certain point. And the reason being is you want to maintain the taper. If you look at the valve stem, not the valve stem, the gauge stem, you'll see there's a slight taper to it. You want to match that. If you bottom out the tap, we say, it's not going to have the taper that you want to make for a good seal. So look at this picture. You can see just what I'm going to call the bottom of the tap. The end of the tap is just starting to come out into the case. That's about when you want to stop. You can always go further, but you can't back up and put it back. So tighten it to that point. And then when you take the tap out again, you'll be able to clean it out. And there you have it. You can see in this next frame, there is the hole with the threads. So take your pressure gauge and gently thread it in there. And then eventually you're going to turn it. You're going to get resistance. I like to have the face of the gauge facing me and I like to buy the accessory mounting kit. So the gauge is going to face me away from the back mount. You know, it's just a thing. And you have to put the back mount on before you can put the gauge on. Keep that in mind. The other thing, of course, is some people might want to have the gauge facing towards the hose as it enters the uh, canister. You can do that too. But certainly you'll see in these frames, I have the mount on before I put on the gauge. Otherwise they get in the way of each other. Okay, so you've got the gauge on and you've, you've threaded it, you've put the gauge on and you want to pressure test it. Now, when you're pressure testing it, you're not just pressure testing the gauge, you're pressure testing the tri-clamp fittings you put on there. These are three quarter inch tri-clamp fittings and they need a lot of tape. They need sealing. I, I had to take them off and redo them again because they don't have the taper. Now, when you tighten them, especially you can tighten them by hand, um, there's this point where there's a shoulder inside of the canister and they'll bottom against it. And that gives you a little bit of a seal, but you can't count on that. You need to make sure the threads are sealed all the way to where they go out. Okay. So what I do is I have a garden hose that has a valve on the outflow with a red hose bib on it. And I have a tri-clamp fitting for that. And I use it for cleaning hoses and other stuff. And I put that on the inlet to the canister when the canister's closed and I fill the canister with water, slow and easy because you get wet. Fill the canister with water. I don't leave air in the canister because if the canister would crack or something under pressure with air in it, it would shatter. With water in it, you just get wet. It goes and just leaks. So it's a thing. You're gonna control that flooding very, very slowly for the pressure gauge. On the outflow, once it's filled, I put a solid cap with a gasket and I clamp it. Now, on one of mine, the first one I did, I brought it up to pressure, I turned off the pressure and I waited. And that needle just stayed right where it was, solid. No leaks whatsoever. Now with the pressure, the inlet pressure turned off, I just loosened the clamp on the outflow and just kind of let rock, thumbed it off with my hand and went and the water drained out. That's all there is to it. <clears throat> on another one I did, it had a seeping leak, very, very slow, but you don't want leaks. So you need to discover where those leaks are. So here's a piece of video. You can see where the pressure gauge is falling back. That's no good. 
So that's one I need to take apart. And it will work. I have confidence in that. Now, let's take it to the next point. So I have a canister now. Where do I get filters? I'm using the blown spun filters. And I'll provide a link below. And you can get incredibly coarse ones, but five micron and one micron, you can buy from Amazon. All right. They're an over-the-counter commodity for homeowners filtering their drinking water, like for reverse osmosis or a well pump or whatnot. They're easy to get. I use one micron for a well. Um, those are good coarse filters for your slider. Someone would tell you just start off with the one micron. I am doing two filters in series. I will filter five micron before I do one micron or one micron before I do half micron. Now you can buy half micron disposable filters from Prescal Wine and they're $7 a piece. If you buy a 0.42 micron filter from Prescal, a reusable fiberglass filter, it's $47 before you pay for shipping. I'm going to start out using the disposable filters for $7 each. But again, I'm putting two in series so that I'm not clogging the second filter right away in case I get into the leaves or something. I, I've got something to, to protect the second filter. I've got something up front. Now, if you're in the point and you're starting to see your back pressure go up, okay, fine. Turn off the pump. Turn off the outflow from the big big tank, you know, the sending tank. Turn the out inlet to the receiving tank. And then you're going to make a little bit of a mess and you can change the filter out. The one thing I recommend is rinse those filters off before you put them into the canister. Okay, you just don't want any loose stuff in there but you can change them out and it works. So I'll put links below for where I get my triclovers. I'll put links below for the filters. I'll put links before, below for the canister. And I will provide a link for the pressure gauges that I use. You'll notice that they're fluid filled. Um, they're a little bit more robust. Remember cider is corrosive. Unlike a lot of wines, it is corrosive. So I went for a fluid filled to limit the incursion of any fluid that might be in there. They're supposed to be for dampening. And because I have a self-priming pump, every time that impeller hits, there is some vibration to it that dampens it. And so I get a nice steady gauge, whatever the pressure might be. I hope you found this useful. Uh, please like, please subscribe. Please give constructive comments. I'd appreciate that. I will be making a frame to hold this whole thing up so I can just roll it up by the pump and make it easier to handle. But this is the nuts and bolts of hacking your own together. The, if you say $20 for the two triclovers, uh, the gauges I think were like $15 or $20 each maybe, and the canister is about $40 something. Um, you're coming under $75 you know, roughly for this assembly, where if you start pricing, think a PI wine or somebody else, you can see they charge a lot more to have them put it together for you. You can do it yourself. You can do this. All the only special, only tool I used in here was a drill gun with a 1764th drill bit and a quarter inch pipe thread tap. Okay. You can do this. So I hope you found this useful. Please like, please subscribe, and whatever you do, please have a good day. Take care. Bye for now.